What you're about to watch is a special private training session for people who bought a copy of my book, Built to Serve. Enjoy. Hello, 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 book readers. Welcome aboard. So the first question that came in on the poll was, how can we focus on one thing with too much information? So at the beginning of anything, it always can feel overwhelming, right? If you're thinking about, I want to start on YouTube. I want to start on social media. I want to start writing my book. I want to start like whatever new project you want to start. It always feels overwhelming. It always feels like it's too big. It always feels like you don't have enough information. You can't wrap your head around what's going on. And so what I like to do is just trying to figure out where are the boundaries? Like, what is it that I actually need to learn? And at the beginning, I get super frustrated of any project, just trying to figure out where are the gates because I'm, I love optimizing. I love efficiency. I love making things as tight as possible. But at the beginning, creativity is messy, and you can't prematurely optimize something. We try to optimize too soon. When you don't know the boundaries, you end up not being able to make any progress. So, at the beginning of any project, I will take some time, sit in my frustration, and just basically try to figure out where the gates are around it. So, what's the most recent one? I think um, figuring out AdWords. Um, and advertising has been one of those things for me in figuring out, okay, what ads do I run? How do I put them up? What are the placements? What, what's the conversions, uh, the demographics, you know, all of the things that seem overwhelming at the beginning. And it's frustrating to know which ads to serve to which uh, audiences and just testing, 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 testing until I kind of get a sense of, okay, this is where the gates are and then make it efficient and squish it down and optimize it. Um, so at the beginning for me, it's just research, right? Research, playing, testing, find, don't get so overwhelmed by the, the big picture that you don't take any action, right? Like what's the smallest possible thing you can just do to start gaining momentum. And then that first step seems impossible. But when you go back, it's like, oh, I did that. I did that first step. That's pretty cool. Now it's <laughs> Evan, Evan's holding up to 2%. I got mine. I got mine too. Make the 2% happen. Anyway, so I hope that makes sense, right? It's taken that big idea that seems overwhelming, that seems impossible, and then finding one step that you can do today. Because as long as you have it as some big dream in your head that is impossible, then you never take any action on it. And then you know, it's a year later and you still haven't done the thing yet because it still seems too impossible. And I see it all the time with entrepreneurs who are getting started. People ask you, how do I get started on YouTube? How do I get started as an author? How do I get started as a speaker? And, and you think you've got to have this perfect plan and the perfect gear and all of this perfect stuff. And then it's a year later and you still haven't done the thing. Immediate action, momentum. I see Zane's big smiling. Um, Zane joined me on my uh, three days a week. Now I stream legal legends and answer business questions. And Zane joined in and he said, yeah, I'm going to start making YouTube videos. Uh, and I forget what his original timeline was. It's like next month or in two months or something. I said, dude, Zane, come on tonight. Make a video. Let's go. Get, get your video up. Uh, and then he did, and he got his first video up, and then the second video, and then another video. Like he's got his phone out. He's going to make another video right now. <laughs> like that's the process, and and it, it's not going to be perfect being off your phone, and it's and it's not going to be the the lighting that you want, or the gear that you want, or the background that you want, and your thoughts may not come out as clearly as you want. That's the beginning. Like the beginning is supposed to be messy, so don't stress out about having all the information at the beginning. Just go, just create. Like in that momentum, uh, you will start getting some results um, and additional momentum to keep on building, right? Uh, and I think a lot of you know my story about losing that $40 million deal when I was 22 years old of just trying to be too perfect and have it all planned out and, you know, <laughs> going to market and then seeing, oh, my perfect plan was not what people wanted anyway, right? Like your perfect version of a YouTube video is not going to be perfect anyway. Once you start creating, it's going to change. It's going to take a million different turns. Um, so the best way to do it is to do it. So to take action against that big idea. So it doesn't just stay, uh, doesn't just stay an idea for you forever. Okay. Next question. Nicolette said, what is your advice on where to start with content creation if you haven't started at all? So the easiest place to start is actually Instagram stories. Like easiest, easiest, easiest place to start is Instagram stories. It's on Instagram. They're 15 seconds max. It's, it's meant to be informal. It's meant to be non-edited. It's meant to be kind of behind the scenes. And so if you're trying to develop that practice of being a speaker, of creating content 
I recommend starting like ground zero. You start with Instagram stories and try to find three to 10 moments during the day that you can share. You know, you, where's my book built to serve, right? You guys, you guys, you have this book. If you're in this group, right? You've, you've got it. Hopefully you've read it. It's not just some fancy ornament sitting there on your desk. Zan's got two copies. <laughs> Victor's got his copy. <laughs> I love it. Evans, I know, has got an entire shelf full of uh, of books somewhere there at the top. Um, so, you know, it's it's about starting to share the way that you think to serve other people. You, you're you weird. You're different. You're I like to say you're a weird duck. You think differently. Your job is to teach me to think like you think. So some of the things that may seem super obvious to you for other people is not so obvious, Right. If I look at even your the, your rooms, for those of you who I can see, you know, your 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 rooms, like why does Zan have Captain America shield on his wall? You know, why does Evan have Napoleon Hill on his wall and Andrew Carnegie? Doug's Doug's trying to hold up built to serve, but it's being blocked out by the <laughs> by the Florida coast. Uh, you know, why does Jeff have Steve Jobs up on his wall, right? Michael's showing believe up on his wall, right? Like, why why do you have these? in your rooms, in your offices, it means something to you. And that may be like, maybe, maybe Zan's been a Captain America fan since he was eight years old. I don't know. Like maybe that's just so natural, normal for him, but for other people, it's kind of weird to have a Captain America shield on your door, right? Like most people don't have that. So explain why it's there, right? Explain why you picked up this book. Most people wouldn't know that that's Napoleon Hill up on Evan's wall, right? So Explain why he's there. Explain what that message means. And, and finding these micro moments throughout the day from your, your routines, your habits, what you're eating for lunch, what happened when a client emailed you, like the way you respond to things is different. And so that's your job. It's not about how fancy the, the video footage is. It's your job to teach me to think the way that you think. And sometimes this is hard to step out of because for you, it's so natural and normal because you've been doing it for a long time. But for somebody else who's watching you from the outside, it's, it's weird and different. And that's the whole point. And so Instagram stories, I think is the easiest way to start just to get you into that practice of creating content. Again, you know, three to 10 different stories a day, it takes 15 seconds max. So, you know, at the minimum, I'm asking for 45 seconds a day, right? This is not a groundbreaking amount of time to create content, right? 45 seconds, three 15 second stories a day. When you're ready to jump in and make it much bigger, um, I would look at YouTube as my primary home, and then I would split up the content to go to the different platforms. So when you can get to making one YouTube video per week, I want a 10 minute YouTube video every week. And it could just be taking me deeper, right? Zan has a 10 minute story about the Captain America shield. Evan has a 10 minute story about what he's learned from Napoleon Hill. Jeff has a 10 minute story about what that bullseye thing is behind him, right? You know, Michael has a 10 minute story about what believe means to him, right? You, it's, a, it's just taking me deeper into it. But the, the Instagram content stories is the first way to just start practicing, getting it out of your head, out of your mouth and into the internet, right? Into the world. Um, once you can get to 10 minute video a week, that's where I want you to be on YouTube because those that content will live forever. And then you split up the content to go to all the different social media platforms. So until you're ready to do that, Instagram stories, once you're ready to do that, then you can still do the Instagram stories, right? It's just add on, it's additive. Again, the Instagram stories are 45 seconds a day. Everybody here has 45 seconds today to record three Instagram stories to tell me about something that's happening um, in your life. And, and it's not, this was really hard for me at the beginning of making content was it's not about uh, telling me what you ate for lunch and just kind of vlogging, it's trying to find the message in everything. So if you're showing me your lunch, tell me why you picked that thing. Like, why are you picking asparagus for lunch? Or why are you having that donut for lunch? Like, why, why are you picking that thing? Like, explain to me the thought process behind it, right? I'm having the donut because I'm celebrating my 50th birthday or something, right? Like, I'm getting the asparagus because I have, you know, I want to live a keto lifestyle or whatever it is, right? Like explain the thought process behind the decisions. I remember when I first got started on social, Twitter was, was blowing up and I thought Twitter was stupid. Like this looks so stupid. People are just sharing pictures of their lunch and cats. And I have no interest in just sharing. I'm, I'm a pretty, uh, 
private person, believe it or not. Like I have no need for you to know what's happening in my life. I have no need to share it. But when I realized, oh, this is actually thought leadership content, that the reason behind making this book or the reason behind having these pictures on my wall, it's not about me showing off. It's about me trying to help other people think the way I think so that they can improve their lives as well. So everything you've got around you is a story that hopefully has helped you improve your life some way. Now bring that back to bring now bring that back into the audience so that they can learn from you. Like, why are you here? Why did you pick up Built to Serve? What was the biggest lesson that you got from it? All of these could be individual stories that, again, teaches people to think like you think. So Stephen wrote, why is it important to tell your story? Okay, so in Built to Serve, we talk about this, right? People need to connect to you. If they don't feel like you know what they've gone through, they won't listen to you. So, um, you know, Evan has shared a lot about his story with uh, alcohol addiction. And, it, you know, you would look at Evan like right now and you would say, oh, this guy looks like he's polished and clean and knows what he's doing and has his life in order. And you wouldn't necessarily think that he was addicted to alcohol. And, and, um, and I know Evan's okay with me kind of sharing bits of his story here on the stream. So if somebody came and was struggling with alcohol addiction and they came across Evan and he said, hey, here's what you have to do. These three things. They say, yeah, that's great, man. But you don't know what I've been through. You, you don't know what it's like. You don't you don't. I mean, I'm addicted. You look at you. You've got your life together. It's all sorted out. Meanwhile, Evan knows exactly what it's like uh, to contemplate suicide, to, to be you know massively addicted, to have a lot of self-hatred because of, of the addiction that that caused. And so unless people know what you've been through, they won't listen to your advice. Like Evan has some of the best advice to help people overcome it. But unless they know his story about how he came through that, they won't listen to him because people will naturally think, well, you don't know what I'm going through. And so this is where you have to share your story, where you've came from, even the journey that you're still on, right? We're still growing. We're still learning. We're, we're never done learning, growing, getting better and improving. But where did you struggle? Where did you come from? Because ultimately your purpose, like we talk about in Built to Serve, is to help other people who currently are who you used to be, right? There are many people who are Evan from eight years ago. Evan Tinsman. we got two Evans in the group. I like using that as an example, right? But there's also many people who are Evan Carmichael from eight years ago. And that's who you're talking to. And that's who you love helping the most. You know, Evan Tinsman will love helping anybody, right? He, and he's been uh, an amazing human in, in the Movement Makers group and this group. Even when we first did our session in Pittsburgh, uh, he was bringing value to all the other people in the room. He just wants to help, right? He wants to contribute, which is fantastic. But helping somebody who is currently struggling through alcohol addiction, is currently struggling with self-worth, is currently struggling with uh, potential you know, suicide, he'll love helping those people more than holding the door for somebody at a grocery store or buying the Starbucks to the person behind him in line because that's who he used to be. And it's the same thing for all of you. And I, I'm telling Evan's story because I know it better. I don't know all of your stories you know, in detail, but you've all been through something. And those are the people who you're going to love helping out the most. It just feels so much better. It feels so fulfilling that you represent hope to them, that when they see you and what you've come through, it represents possibility for them because they don't see possibility. For a lot of you, where you are right now is impossible. For where Evan is right now, it's impossible. He shouldn't be here. He shouldn't be doing the stuff that he's doing right now. It's impossible. Evan from X number of years ago would, would look at this guy and say, there's no way you're going to be doing that. That's not possible. But he did it. Yeah. And so have you. And all of you are here right now. And the version of you five, 10 years ago would say that's not possible. And so that's your job is to show other people who currently are you from five or 10 years ago that it's possible, that there is hope, that you can grow, that you can overcome, that you can climb out of this hole that you're in. But without sharing your story, to the question that Stephen asked, without sharing your story, uh, nobody's going to listen to you. So you've got all this great information. You've got the knowledge, the tools, the, the desire to help, the willingness, all of it. And you can help and you know that it can help. But nobody's going to listen to you because they feel like you don't know what you're talking about because you haven't been through what I've been through. So that's why it's super important to share your story. And, and um, it's scary 
it's scary to share your story. It's scary to put it out there. It's scary for people to know um, what you've been through. You know, like using Evan again as an example, he's has a super successful uh, practice uh, in insurance. And it could be scary to let that out, to have clients, have customers, have partners, have people in the community know that you almost killed yourself when you were addicted to alcohol, right? Like now you're not normal anymore. Now you don't fit in maybe as much anymore. It could be scary for people to know what you've been through. Um, but if you are silent, it perpetuates the silence. It means everybody else who's struggling with it, they stay silent too, and they become afraid to share. And your willingness to share, to be brave, to be courageous, to put your story out there, inspires other people to say, hey, I'm not alone. I'm not the only one going through this. And it's okay to share my story too. Uh, so I see that as your, all of you, your responsibility to be able to do that. So, okay, Esmeralda is here. How do I overcome the fear of being in front of the camera or sharing pictures of myself? Well, where's Esmeralda? Esmeralda, we could do it right now. It's called turning on your camera. <laughs> Hey, we got lots of people. Hey, there she is, Esmeralda. Woo! <laughs> it's one step. Look at all the high fives and fist bumps and flexes you're getting, right? I mean, that's that's the start. Uh, so I do a couple of things. One is I tell myself that being afraid is not a good enough reason. You don't want to teach yourself that I'm afraid and I don't do it. I'm afraid and I play small. I'm afraid to chase down my dream and then I don't go for it because that becomes this negative cycle that we repeat. And I love that you're like in a, in a grocery store or convenience store or somewhere there while they're all still tuning in to the live. It's amazing. Uh, but being afraid is not a good enough reason. If you can catch it, like the reason I want to do this, but I'm, but I'm afraid that just mental break down that wall being afraid is no longer a good enough reason because everything that you want out of life is on the other side of what you're afraid of. Every growth, every opportunity, every breakthrough, every client, like everything you want to do comes from doing things that you're afraid of. Otherwise, if you're never afraid, then what? Then you, you stay stuck doing what you're doing. You just stay inside your comfort zone. It's just your life photocopying every single day. Are you at your job? That's amazing. I think she's working there. That's awesome. Esmeralda joining in. I remember when I had my one of the only jobs I had was doing data entry at this company and they wouldn't let me listen to music. So it was back when we had a CD. What's a CD man? It's like the Walkman, but for CDs, like a portable little CD player. So I used to have that on the floor. And then I ran a wire through my jeans and I always wore a turtleneck and I ran. The, I got an extra long extension cord for my headset, for my headphones, and I'd run the wire under my turtleneck and just pop out here to get one little sound bud to go into my ears so I can listen to some, uh, mostly Andrea Bocelli at the time while I was doing this super boring data entry work. So I love it. I love, I love the hacks. Um, okay. So to that question, one is fear alone is, is not a good enough reason. The second part is you're trying to serve. You're trying to serve. You want to help. You're doing this, you know, you're afraid to get in front of the camera, but why do you want to get in front of the camera? Take it from, I want to, uh, it's not about you being seen. It's not about you being this big famous name. It's about, you have a message that can help people. You're here trying to serve. And whenever I flip it to, it's about the audience, it's about the people who will see this, is that even if only five people see this video, maybe two out of those five people, this could actually be something life-changing for them. It's not about you. It's about them. That always gives me that extra little bit of, of confidence and push to go off and do the thing that that I'm afraid to do. So I balance it between those two things, right? I'll tell myself, I'm Evan Castrilli Carmichael, I do difficult things or I do scary things or I do the things I'm afraid of. Plus, I'm here to serve and I'm here to help. And my message can hopefully touch somebody today. It may not, but it's your intention going in. Like the intention behind the action of being in front of the camera is not to screw people over. It's not just to make yourself famous. It's to try to help, it's to try to serve. And so I always take that mindset going in before, uh, whenever I'm super nervous, uh, or before I'm ever making any piece of content. It helps when you're when you're even filming your own YouTube videos because sometimes it's hard when you're at home in an office, maybe with Corona you haven't seen any humans for the last little bit and interact with them. And you just even here I'm talking to just to a camera, and it's awesome to be able to see your faces up here on the screen to remind yourself that hey, this is a video that's not just me in my office by myself. 
you're making this video to try to touch somebody else's life. And when you take that as an intention, you'll, your video will be better. When you're just focused on, oh, am I looking at the camera and is my mic set up and all this other stuff, your video won't be as good compared to if you actually picture somebody in your head. I used to do this all the time because I, I had a hard time getting into the zone when I was making content. I would picture somebody and I'm, I'm making this video for him. This video is just for him and I'm speaking to him and, and then I would channel him as I pressed record on my camera and it always ended up getting a much better video. Man, time flies. It's crazy. We're already at time. Let's get to, let's get to like super rapid fire. Uh, how to deliver the idea message in a simple way. Uh, oh, hot chocolate readings. I would, I would do a, a 30 second hot chocolate reading every day and post it to Instagram. Hot chocolate reading of the day. And then whatever, whatever the, whatever comes at every day, right? Every day for 30 seconds. Um, from Denise, what type of videos go viral in your opinion? If, you know, if I had a recipe for making a viral video every time, that'd be amazing. Like that's what everybody's going after, but really it'd be looking at make the video that you from five years ago badly needs, right? Make the video that the you from five or 10 years ago badly needs. Cause the you from five or 10 years ago probably wouldn't watch an Evan Carmichael video. Like, oh, that guy, he's too energetic. He's too positive. That can't, can't be real. I don't know. You know, like you don't want to listen to those guys. <laughs> but you could, you could touch you from five or 10 years ago in a way that Evan Carmichael or Tony Robbins or Brendan Burchard or whoever else can't. And that's, I think, even much more important than worrying about a viral video that, that blows up on the internet is having an impactful video that changes somebody's life. So I'm still trying to make the content that, uh, that I need right now, but also that like five years ago, Evan still needs. Uh, so that's always kind of in the back of my head as well. Evan Tinsman saying, disagree. Ooh, okay. Your content helped get this Evan to where he is now. <laughs> well, I love it. <laughs> Thank you, Evan. Appreciate the love, man. Um, love that five to 10 years ago idea. Brilliant. Yeah. Just, to, just imagine you from five or 10 years ago or somebody who is like you and you're making content for that person. Because, you know, again, Jeff from five or 10 years ago is thinking a different way. He's not, doesn't have as much of a growth mindset, is not wanting to listen to a lot of the messages that are being put up there. You know, he would look at what you're doing now and say, that's crazy. You know, with books on the shelf and bullseye and all these goals and accomplish, like you wouldn't think that that would be possible. Uh, and so you can reach Jeff from five or 10 years ago in a way that nobody else can. If you want to get a copy of Built to Serve and join us live for our next training with me to ask your questions, you can go get the book right there next to me, right there. I'll see you there. I'll see you to get the book. It's a good one. Much love.